Okay, here's another problem very similar to the one that I solved in the previous video. So I'm not going to go through, you know, the Hubble, 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 not going to do it anyway, whatever it is. I'm not going to go through this whole uh, conversation of like, what are the different things we're evaluating, right? We already know we're going to have constant acceleration, we're going to have constant velocity maintains this velocity, that constant velocity, and we know we're going to have to deal with average velocity, and we understand those are three different physical situations, and each of those three situations has associated with it, or attached to it, different equations, right? So one particular equation governs, that's a great word, governs uniform acceleration, constant acceleration, a, uh, or four equations really govern that. Another equation governs constant velocity. And another one governs average velocity. They're different. You've seen those in the previous video. If you haven't watched the previous video, take a look. Watch in HD, this one and the last one. Okay, in this case, someone accelerates uniformly from rest to a final velocity of positive 3 over an interval of 21 seconds. That's a lot of givens right there. So in some first segment A, there is constant acceleration. Then, the person maintains this velocity. Which velocity? Oh yeah, it maintains, the person maintains a velocity of 3. So then the person travels at 3 meters per second for 17 seconds. What's the person's average velocity over the full trip? First, we see there are two distinct segments. If it helps to visualize, go ahead and make a VT graph. The person's velocity increases steadily, constantly, from rest. So it starts at zero velocity and ends at a velocity of 3.0. And then, once reaching that velocity, how much time has passed? 21 seconds. After that, the person moves with a constant velocity of 3. That's the velocity for this whole period. How long does that last? for 17 seconds. Oops, it's 17 seconds more, so the total time that's passed is 38 seconds. So we have two segments. I'll, uh, I will call them segments A and segments B. And once we realize that there are two different segments and they have different equations, we know we will have to evaluate A and B separately. Right? We have to consider them separately. All right, so what are we asked to find in the first place? We want to find the average velocity. So you write down the equation for average velocity. But we're looking for average velocity over the entire trip. Entire. So we need the total displacement for the whole trip and the total time of the whole trip. You know that the total displacement is simply the sum of the individual displacements. So you add together delta x for segment A, you add it with the displacement during segment B. That's how you find the total displacement. The total time is nothing more than the sum of the individual times during the two individual segments. So we know delta T A, right? The first segment lasts 21 seconds. We know delta TB. The second segment lasts 17 seconds. We do not yet know either of the displacements from A or B. We have to find those. Once we know them, we can solve for average velocity, which is what we really want uh, in order to answer this question. So we will find delta XA. We will find delta XB. We'll plug them into this equation and find the answer. That's our roadmap. So let's get started. Cannot wait. So excited for this. What a good problem. These good pro these are hard problems. They require so much of what we've learned. And that makes them great. They're satisfying when they're over. Um, yeah, good, satisfying problems. And whoops, let's, I didn't get everything. Here we are. First. Let's find delta x sub a. In segment a, we have uniform acceleration. That's a fancy way of saying constant acceleration. We start at rest, and we 
accelerate up to a final velocity of positive 3. Wow, the question sure was nice to put the word final in there. That makes things a little bit easier. And this lasts for 21 seconds. We need to find delta xa. We're in the business of finding delta xa. Okay. So what equation will we use? We have to use an equation for constant acceleration. Right? There are four equations for constant acceleration. You know what they are. They're in your notes. You've used them on problems. Find the equation that has these four things, delta x, delta t, vi, vf. And which one is it? Oh yeah, you remember. It's this one. And because we're talking about segment A, I'll go ahead and add in my subscript, delta x sub A. So I know, I know vi, I know vf, I know delta t. I have one unknown and one equation, which means I can solve for my unknown. So you solve for the unknown, you plug in the value, oops, plug in the value of vi. vi was zero. Oh, wonderful. That's always easy. VF was 3 meters per second. I'll leave it off in the units. The time was 21 seconds. That's This calculation will give us the value of delta x sub a. OK, then. I'm going to move all this away. Don't need it. You plug this thing into the calculator. Let's see. Batteries are low. Uh -oh. 3 over 2 times 21. Oh, uh, 31.5. That was pretty easy. Meters. That's the displacement during the first portion of the trip, portion A, where the person is accelerating, getting, uh, increasing her velocity. Right, she's accelerating from rest. So let me move this over. We'll come back to that, use that piece of information again shortly. Segment B now, let's find the second displacement, delta x sub b. x sub b. In the second part of the trip, the second segment, the person maintains this velocity for 17 seconds. The velocity she's maintaining, if you read the problem, is the positive 3 meters per second. She gets up to that velocity, and then she maintains it. So there's a constant velocity. There's a constant velocity. I'll even call it V sub constant. You know, I like subscripts. Maybe you don't. You don't have to put constant as a subscript. But I really like subscripts. They, you know, they reassure me. Um, so, right when I when I'm feeling when I'm feeling like a little tired, a long day, I'll just add a subscript. You know, I'll say, Mister. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. Mr. M, sub, great job. They reassure me. Great job. What are we doing? We're in a problem right now. OK, subscripts. You don't need them, but they're helpful to remind us what we're talking about. They give a little bit more depth to those variables, which are just one letter. They're kind of hard to remember sometimes what they mean. OK, the constant velocity is 3 meters per second. Segment B lasts for how long? 17 seconds. We are obviously looking for the displacement. That's what this says. So there's one equation. There's one equation for constant velocity. It's this. Oh, and because I put constant as a subscript, I'm going to do that right here. Constant. Constantinople. Constant. So I know what this is. I know what delta t is. I can find delta x. I'm applying this equation to segment b. So I'll go ahead, because I love subscripts so much, I'm going to go ahead and put in some subscripts to remind me that I'm doing this equation. I'm applying it to specifically just segment b. Now that I have my equation written down, I can plug in the values that I've got in my chart, those and solve for delta x sub b. 
So V constant is positive 3. I'm going to leave off units right now. We've done lots of unit analysis. Delta X sub B is the unknown. The time is 17 seconds. You multiply these together. 21 plus 30. And that is what you get for delta X sub B. B. Bzz, bees. Okay. Long day. Mr. McGinney's getting punchy, isn't he? Uh, Alright. Let's move this over. And this. Oh, lost the negative, uh, positive. Now that I know these individual displacements, what am I going to do? I'm going to add them together. Remember this equation? No, because it's not all there. We're missing part. Oh, straggler there. Now that I know the individual displacements during segments A and B, I can add them together here and there in the numerator and solve for the average velocity. So let's do that right now. The average. The numerator has delta x sub a, that's 31.5 meters, plus delta x sub b, that's 51 meters. Good. The denominator has delta t sub a, that's the time that segment a lasted. What was it? 21 seconds. 21 seconds. Plus delta t sub b, the time that segment b lasted. 17 seconds. You plug this into uh, Mr. Buttons, my nickname for the calculator, or Mrs. Buttons, right? Mr. Buttons, that's so gender normative. We get 82.5 in the numerator. We're going to divide this by, what, 38? And the answer, ah, you can sigh a sigh of relief. Positive 2.2 .2 seconds. Oh, meters per second. Whoops. Got to get your units correct. Right? Meters are the unit of the numerator. Seconds is the unit of the denominator. So 2.2 .2 meters per second, it's positive. That indicates to you that the average velocity is in the positive direction. So on average, the, the object, the person, she was going on average in the positive direction with this speed. And that's how you solve that problem. Great work. These are hard because they incorporate so much of what we've learned, and uh, you've just done it, I think. I can't see, but it sure seems like you have. I'm just, I have a feeling. Good work.